and welcome back to today's video. My name is Brittany Simon. In today's video, I wanna talk about how memeable tragedy can become or is without being too offensive. Obviously, a huge tragedy just recently happened, as tragedy often does around the world every second. But in particular, the Ocean Gate submarine caught everyone's eye this weekend, or at least it caught mine. And if you were like me this week, watching it, watching it, watching it, telling your partners about it, your family members, keeping up, researching, it felt all encompassing. You know, it felt like something that I had to pay attention to but it also felt like something that was just interesting to observe. Obviously, since real people died, I do just wanna, you know, encourage a sense of respect over the dead with an understanding that because we're people, we are gonna react the way we're gonna react even to people's deaths. So for some people, death can be a moment of humor, which I know is really hard to process. Sometimes it's a way to mourn, right? A lot of families will have funerals where you tell really good stories about the people you loved. Sometimes when tragedy happens, the way to cope with it is to speak in a humorous way, maybe to tell jokes so it doesn't feel as intense. If you're like some people, like one of the members who passed away, one of the five, his son was allegedly at a Blink-182 concert saying that his family would have wanted him to be there. Maybe that was his way of coping. Ultimately, everyone viewed the story differently. Some people felt like people were being heartless. Some people felt like everyone was taking it too seriously. Some people were excited that these people passed away because they were rich. I know some YouTubers, a lot of people have been talking about whether or not we should be celebrating the death of billionaires, while other people felt like this was a distraction from bigger stories in the news. Has anyone seen the news about the submarine? I wonder what we're being distracted from this time. So what I wanna do, I think, is sort of discuss how I'm processing it and then hopefully hear from you in the comment sections down below. Originally, I wasn't even gonna cover this story, but I was on my Discord and I was talking to my VC and one of the people there really encouraged me to make content about it, saying like, I'd love to hear your opinion. Um, from their perspective, there was this idea around rich people there is this idea around rich people where they think they're invincible, much like youth. They feel like I'm not gonna die, I'm too rich to die. But also there is a sense of desperate, I think, from rich people that I sense, a desperate need to feel alive, a desperate need to feel adventure. There's this sort of assumption that when you're rich, you think you're invincible, which I think is accurate. But also if you're that rich, don't you kind of get bored if you don't have a sense of joy that's foundational to your consciousness? If you're not having a real relationship with your consciousness, I could see a very rich person feeling so bored that they kind of have to risk their life. Now, as a former adrenaline junkie and someone who's slowed down over the years because I'm actually kind of afraid of dying, not because I'm afraid of death, but I am afraid of like losing my partner. I'm kind of riding the wave of romance right now and the idea of dying and being away from him definitely makes me more cautious. But prior to him coming into my life. I mean, I've jumped out of airplanes. I've done drugs. I definitely have done risky BDSM scenes. I have challenged my body. I've tried to reach limits. And so there is a sense there of adventure that is sort of attractive, I think. So as I'm observing this story, I'm coming away with like the sense of sadness, but also I hate to say it, but humor. There was so much humor in the situation and there's so much humor and tragedy. Now, I grew up a late 90s, 2000s kid, right? I was born in 1989. I mean, no offense, but compared to some generations who had very big one or two tragedies, I feel like a lot of my generation had tragedy after tragedy after tragedy. And eventually humor became our way to deal and cope. So I'm not sure if all the memes were so perfect because that's how we cope with tragedy or if we really are so desensitized to violence and death and tragedy that we don't care at this point. Now, people were creating theories that maybe this was a distraction from something bigger that's happening, but in my opinion, I think something bigger is always happening and also nothing bigger is ever happening. Because we know a million people or so die a day, because we know that tragedy is constantly happening, because we know people commit suicide every so many seconds, because we know that pain and suffering are happening every moment, it's hard not to feel like, that's life and I can't always be drowning in other people's misery or their pain because, well, I won't be able to be grateful for my joy, right? Now, uh, recently there was things in the news like a migrant boat, a, a migrant boat, boat, I think of like 800 people, mostly women and children, allegedly capsized. Some people have conspiracy theories that it was, you know, maybe purposely brought down. There's all of this anger around 
the news and the news cycles and the distractions and why are we paying attention to billionaires when we could be paying attention to people who need our help. And the truth is, I think we all need help, whether we're billionaires or not, but I'm not sure any of us are obligated to feel sad for one another. And I'm really not sure that any of us are obligated to care that a person has passed away. I think this idea that we have is rooted in shame and guilt of the bubble. And your bubble might tell you, you should feel bad someone died, but given how we all react to people we don't like, I'm not sure that's really the thing, right? That we're mad at. I don't think you and I are really upset that some people aren't upset that some people aren't upset that someone died. <laughs> I think we're upset when the people we care about aren't respected when they die. So I think it's an, another reason that, or it's another, it's another ego thing. It's another, I care, so you should care. Versus we should all care when humans die. But do we? I don't think that makes sense given human history and how we observe the humans as like a species. If we observe ourselves, I don't think it's accurate to say that we do care that people die. I think it's more appropriate to say we care when people we care about die. And so once again, this tragedy is sort of an ego boost to the people who are shaming you for not caring and shaming you for caring, right? So there's like these two camps of people. People are like, this is human life, you should care. That's from your perspective, your bubble, right? Because you've decided to care or play virtue signal, you want other people to care. And then on the other side, they're like, how could you care about billionaires when migrants are dying? That's a great question. But again, that's about your ego. You care more about migrants, right? But these people represent families and lineage and husbands and wives and kids and partners. So they matter to somebody, maybe hundreds of people. So once again, when we're talking about what it means to care, I think we have to ask ourselves, is my care rooted in my ego? And if it is, how can I have the expectation of other people caring about my ego? Okay, that's all I wanted to say. Thank you for being here. I really appreciate your future comments. I'd love to read them in the sections down below, especially since I've seen some YouTubers in my sphere make content about this subject. I understand where they're coming from, but I can't help but feel that once again, this is about the ego. Okay, talk to you guys soon. Bye. I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine Not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense I've been nothing but blessed So why's my life a mess? Please tell me, cause I'm sick of thinking Yeah, I'm sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool Dun, 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 dun.